Okay, so I invite you to stand. This is Flaming United Methodist Church. It's August the 2nd. And we're going to uh, start on 369, which is Blessed Assurance. So blessed assurance, Jesus is mine.
seated, and we will uh, take care of our announcements. So we have birthdays this week. We have uh, Ann Mitchell is Friday. Happy birthday. And then we have David Cox is tomorrow. Did you say 15? When did you say that? 16. 16. Okay. 85. Happy birthday. And then David Cox is on Monday. Any other birthdays we're celebrating this week? Don't want to miss anybody. Let's sing. Happy birthday to you. So my anniversary list is empty, but do we have anyone celebrating an anniversary this week? Okay. I mean, we're in August, but it's later in the month. It's okay. So we'll get there. We do want to keep uh, Lita uh, and, and uh, Bobby's grand, uh, great-grandson Seth in our prayers. He's got a recurrence of cancer. He's 10 years old, and he's back, been in the hospital for about four days. They're still working on that. Um, we're also uh, praying for Lauren Harris. Uh, the Bolden family, we've been praying for them. Awesome that you guys are back. Bill's okay too? And you said Sarah and... Uh, and Dylan are just getting over. They're just over. So Dylan, okay. So we'll keep praying that the Boldens keep going. We have Bill Lyle praying for Bill. And uh, I didn't... We No one has a report on Bill. It was here earlier. Does anyone have a report on Bill? Okay, that's our homework for next week. Someone come back with a report on Bill. I'll try. Uh, and then Edwin to Evan Reed. We'll continue praying for someone. Any others? Yes, ma'am. For my brother-in-law, Jim Lake, he has been diagnosed with prostate cancer and will have surgery the 11th of this month at Temple at Scott and White. Okay, okay. You mentioned that earlier. Good deal. Thank you. All right, well, let me, uh, I don't think my manuscript made it up here, so let me get my manuscript. Let's bow our heads for prayer. God of mercy, we come to you in prayer, and we come lifting up the matters that we brought before you, and we have others, and we just pray, God, that in each of these situations, you would bring what is needed most, that you would bring healing, that you would bring comfort, that you would bring peace. And Lord God, we pray that you would provide all of us the energy that we need so that we can be effective witnesses to the good news of Jesus Christ. We ask, Lord God, that, that our witness would reach people who are living right now without you. And that through our church and our people, that, that folks would come to know you, come to know the good news of Jesus Christ, and begin living in the relationship that is possible. Help us, God, to never forget that you are with us, and that your hand leads us and guides us. We pray all of this in Jesus' name, and we pray now, we're just going to say amen. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. These first Sundays, I forget the Lord's Prayer is later in the service. Um, We are, I'm playing today because, because uh, Sarah at the Normandy Church needed to be away this Sunday. And so praise me and Sunday we swapped. And uh, the, other, the other folks that play with me, uh, a, couple, a couple of them were just wanting to be safe. And then the other one was busy. And so it's just me and Letha today. And then it'll be Letha again next week. <laughs> One by one, Jesse's son stood before the prophet. God makes 
and did not prevent them to attack Saul. Then Saul got up and left the cave and went on his way. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's, uh, let's stand now and let's join together in our affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day He arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence He shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. After the church service there, um, we do we do the children's church. It's the children's church that used to happen during the service, but we're doing it after the service, and it's on Zoom, so it's a remote situation. And we have between two and four um, kiddos that are, that are on that service, and we all look up. And, and uh, so last, Nancy was doing the Latin lesson last week, and Nancy starts, she, she's following the same lessons that my sermons are on and so last week she starts and she said okay today we're going to be talking about David and you know one of the kids I'm not sure if it was oh not again or or still or what it was but they were they're, they're recognizing David now as a continual theme and, and I can't help but wonder maybe if 
if that sentiment maybe is uh, maybe it's more than just the children's church that's feeling that way. <laughs> but I tell you what, I'm having too much fun preaching on David, and so I don't. I think I'm into September now on the calendar. So you guys may have to slow me down if we need to. But there's a lot. Hey, David offers us a lot, and so we're just going to keep going strong until we until we stop and move on to something else. So. You know, we, we've, we've covered a lot of David. We started as a shepherd boy, talked about him the anointed king, talked about him when he killed the giant Goliath and, and how that made him extremely popular. You know, he kills his 10,000, Saul kills his 1,000. And then, uh, then, then he gets on the outs with King Saul. And, and, and except, I think, for the relationship, the friendship between David and Saul's son, Jonathan, David would have probably been in big trouble. But David is, uh, we, we covered it last week, David is an outlaw. He is now being pursued all over, from the, from the west, close to the Mediterranean Sea, all the way past the Jordan and the Moab, and he's kind of going back and forth, running laps, and, and Saul is chasing him, and, and uh, Saul is now right there on top of David. We ended last week with David in En Gedi, which is right on the Red Sea. It's not that far from where the Dead Sea Scrolls were found. You know, the Dead Sea Scrolls were found in caves close to the Red Sea, and, and, and I don't have the exact distance, maybe 10, maybe 20 miles, somewhere within 10 or 20 miles in Getty in the Red Sea Scrolls. And so David's not too far from that area. It, it's isolated, it's remote, it's, it's very arid. They're hiding in a cave. And, and it just so happens King Saul wants some privacy while he takes care of his business. He goes into the same cave as King David and all of his men. And while he's in there, David sneaks up, and David cuts off a corner of his cloak and sneaks back. Now, his men, and we just read it, his men say, look, this is God's message to you. That God has delivered your enemy into your hands so that you can take care of him. This and his men, men, David's men are telling David, this is what God wants you to do because of what's happening. And the thing is, is you know, David at this point, you know, the first report was 400 men, and the second report was 600 men. We don't know how many, several hundred, let's say. A little less than a thousand, between say five hundred thousand. King Saul has shown up with three thousand men, so they're they're, they're way outnumbered. But here here's what I, I I guess the first thing that comes to my mind is so when you're in a crowd of people, and everyone in that crowd of people says this is what God wants you to do, and 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 that's sometimes I think a great place to be because it's, sometimes it's kind of hard to figure out what God wants us to do and. And, and half the times, I know, I feel like I'm just kind of guessing, you know, it's like, well, you know, and, and so we talked about this at the end of last week, even, how do you know what God wants you to do? What do you do to kind of, to, to help you with that decision? So, so here's David, he's in the cave, his enemy is right there, his enemy is exposed, and, and that's sort of a pun, I didn't mean for it to be, but his enemy <laughs> is helpless, and David can do anything he wants. Everybody there. He says, here's what God, God's will. He's right here. Kill him and we're, we're done. We're safe. And David says, no. No. And, and, and what challenge that would be for us when we have something right in front of us that seems to be exactly what God would, would allow, would permit, to, to go, ah, no. And, and that's why I think it's so important to just have that time in God's Word, that time in prayer, so that the, when, when you have the opportunity, even though a room full of a few hundred of your closest friends are saying, this is what God wants, you can say, no, no, I think God wants something else. And it says, you know, David goes and cuts off that corner of his cloak, and the Scriptures tell us, David was stricken to the heart because he had cut off a corner of Saul's cloak. So David is feeling remorseful and guilty because he had damaged Saul's outfit. And, and even, even that caused him remorse. 
Because, because he goes on to explain to his men, he says, the Lord forbid that I should do this thing to my Lord, the Lord's anointed, to raise my hand against him. For he is the Lord's anointed. David was somehow able to see that Saul, even though he was misguided, God had anointed him to do what God wanted him to do. I think a great case could be made that, that Saul had stopped doing what God wanted him to do a while back. But David still felt like that Saul was God's anointed. David recognized that Saul, in, in some way, was created by God called by God, that God was using Saul for some something, and David did not want to interfere with what God was up to in the life of Saul. You know, I, I, I hope I've said this before, I've certainly intended to, so I'm going to say it now just in case. God has something for every one of us to do. God has created us in His image, God has given us all different gifts, and then God has, has something, a call, a purpose for us to do. And it's, it's going to move through our lives. It's probably not going to be the, the same thing from, from you know, our, our teens to our 20s to our 30s to our, our 60s or 70s. Whatever. But God, God, I think, continues to give us gifts, continues to empower us and call us to do God's work. Well, if God is doing that for everybody, and I believe God is, that means God is doing that for the people that we struggle with. You know, whether they're our enemies, whether they're the people that annoy us, whether they're, they're people we just don't like. You know, if God is calling us, you know, God created us, God calls us, God gives us gifts, God is doing that for everybody. And so we want to be really careful when we start to go up against people, especially if that's going to in some way create an obstacle for them to do whatever it is that God wants them to do. You know, there are people out there, I don't get their role in God's kingdom. I just don't get it. And maybe, maybe a case could be made that, that they don't have one, but that's not my case to make. All that God wants me to do is take care of, of my gifts, my calling, my, my little thing. And that's what God wants for all of us. You know, and where we can, I think it, it's so important for us to help and empower and encourage one another. And if there's a situation where we can't, let's not be an obstacle for others to do those things that God has created them to do. I think, I think, uh, So, so I found a list of temptations, top temptations. This is an old list. I wouldn't be surprised if it wouldn't be pretty current for today. Number one, materialism. Number two, pride. Number three, self-centeredness. Number four, laziness. There's a tie for number five. Anger, bitterness, and then sexual lust. And then seven is envy. Eight is gluttony. Nine is lying. And, and, and when this was done, the survey respondents noted that temptations were more potent when they neglect their time with God. Four in five, four people in five said that the temptation was harder to resist when they were, were not spending time with, with God. How important it is for us to have, and in my note here, I have daily time, but really I think what God wants is a continual time. You know, if you look at that verse in 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, pray without ceasing. Somehow God wants us to have a continual time, every moment, focusing on Him. And, and, and so I think that, that if we were going to have a, a game plan for, for today and forward, is, is let's keep our time with God to help us 
with our temptations to help us when we run into folks that we'd just rather not help. And remember that God created everybody to do the things that God wants to do. And then, and then the second thing I would, I would ask us to think about is extending mercy and forgiveness. Because that's exactly what David has done here in the cave. David has extended Saul mercy. And, and in some way, David has, in his heart, just by his actions, has forgiven Saul for chasing him all over the country and trying to kill him. Jesus put it this way in Luke chapter 6. I say to you that listen, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer your other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you, and if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who loved you, love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good, lend expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High. For he is kind to the ungrateful and to the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father in heaven is merciful. So, so, so make, let's, let's make sure we keep our time alone with God. And let's be ready to be merciful and, and forgiving. So there's a, there a grandmother celebrating her golden wedding anniversary. And uh, she was asked to tell the secret for her long and happy marriage. And here's what she said. On my wedding day, I decided to make a list of ten of my husband's faults, which for the sake of the marriage, I would overlook. And she was asked what some of those faults were. She replied, To tell you the truth, I never did get around to making the list. But any time my husband got me really angry and mad, I would just say to myself, lucky for him, that one's on the list. <laughs> Jesus Christ offered himself for us, died and arose, so that we could receive mercy, so that we could be forgiven, and, and to help us understand that a part of our role in our faith is to extend mercy and forgiveness to others. Let's pray. Lord God, we, we thank you for this time and, and this place. And we thank you for the love that you give to us and that we feel from you. Help us, Lord God, in all that we do to be faithful to you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So I invite you to, to, to get your hymnal and turn to page 12 as we uh, get ready to uh, receive Holy Communion. We'll start there with the invitation. Christ our Lord offers, Christ our Lord invites to His table all who love Him, earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Let's pray together. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your will. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the need. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, 
you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. The great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join there and in the end. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ so that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by His blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ one with each other, one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at His heavenly banquet through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All right, so, so we're, we're kind of used to what we do, but we've got the self-contained elements. There's two films. The first one will reveal the bread wafer, and the second one will, will reveal the juice. We'll, we'll get those passed out. And then, uh, and then once they're all passed out, we can we can consume the elements together. It'll take me a second to get to get ready. I think.
So we'll take off that first seal and get to the wafer. That's the clear seal. The body of Christ given for you. Take off the seal that's over the juice. The blood of Christ. Shed for you. Just leave leave the, the cup in the bowl. Or if you if you want to, there's a white truck, there's a white paper bag, or there's our trash in the fellowship hall. But we'll just pick up the bowls after and it's okay to leave. Leave that cup in the bowl. Let's, uh, let's go down to page 11, and on page 11, there's a prayer after receiving. Let's pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery, in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit, to give ourselves to others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So we are continuing to collect our offering. We're not passing plates, but we do have plates at the back. And then there's a basket up here at the front if you want to use either one of those. Also, if you would like to mail, mail an offering to the church. It's Post Office Box 14, Flint, Texas, 77855. And... Uh, I just want to read from Leviticus 27. Count off every tenth animal from your herds and flocks and set them apart for the Lord as holy. Some of us can do that. Some of <laughs> us can't, but that's okay. Let's, uh, let's sing our doxology in here. Let's stand and Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above. time in the service where we make a decision for Christ, and, and I hope that we all um, decide to be just more diligent about our time with God, that we remember David's merciful and forgiving heart with King Saul, and that we maybe practice that on folks that we struggle to practice that on. And we're going to sing as our hymn of commitment, Near to the Heart of God. It's 194. 194. In the hymn. Here we go. There is.
bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you and give you the gift of his peace. We ask this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.